My name is Nat Pimpa from um, Mahidon University, and it's really a, a, a privilege for me to share my uh, work the uh, ASEAN Center for Sustainable Development uh, Studies and Dialogue under the College of Management on Human Rights and Business Due Diligence in um, the ASEAN uh, or the, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. But um, first of all, I'd like to address the importance of the um, United Nations principle on um, business and human rights, which uh, was created um, not so long ago. It might take you back to 2005 when the, the UN Human Rights Council at that time requested the um, UN Secretary General to appoint a special sort of task force or representative on business and human rights. And pretty much the mandate that they requested include to identify and to clarify uh, standards and best practices in the area of business and human rights. So that was uh, when the world started to think seriously about the importance of this issue. And what more important uh, for us is um, that uh, represent should look at uh, how to qualify such concept as corporate complicity, corporate complicity in human rights abuse committed by parties such as multinational corporations. And more importantly, uh, we should think of ways to develop materials and methodologies for human rights and impact assessment. Social value is part of this. And once um, uh, everything is set in stone, the world start to know the um, UNGP or you know, the guiding uh, principle on business and human rights, uh, which um, the UN endorsed as the um, normative text that had not been negotiated by government themselves, but from uh, the business uh, sector. And uh, that endorsement placed the UNGP beyond PO uh, voluntarism into the domination of so-called soft law. So it's important that we take this soft law into the serious consideration, right? If you look at the pillars of um, the UN um, GP, there are three of them, and there are three stakeholders who need to work upon this. Pillar one is on um, the state that uh, has the, they have the, uh, the duty to protect, to protect the workers, to protect um, those who are part of the um, international business activities. Pillar two is the corporate that should focus upon the corporate responsibility. And uh, the three is um, um, remedy, which uh, look at what to do in case um, those who suffer the consequence of um, international business sectors, uh, and they need to do something on that behalf. And um, I'm not going to bore you to tear by looking at globalization of production. We know that the uh, expansion of business uh, in the international arena. It's a part of globalization, the production whereby um, multinational corporations uh, enjoy the benefit of taking advantage of resources worldwide with um, sort of um, um, freer uh, world trade system. Hence, um, once um, they expand into another country, issues such as human rights uh, can be the, the thorny issue for them because um, from the, the business world, obviously I come from business school. So we talk about issues such as how to make your uh, operation either cheaper or more efficient, right? Cheaper is an easy way to go. So um, issues that related to cut the widgets, make uh, it cheaper wire, um, make it um, sort of slightly cheaper in another place where people might need uh, resources or a place where regulation hasn't really been uh, put in place. That can be the issue of human rights violation by business. Okay, so um, at this um, particular um, workshop, uh, we focus on a couple of issues, but I, I only want to present uh, the challenges in human rights um, due diligence in business in which uh, our region uh, in Southeast Asia, we are um, facing from the business perspective, in particular in the time of COVID-19 pandemic, as well as uh, the uh, conflict within the regions, as you are aware of um, political changes in uh, Myanmar, shift in Thailand, as well as um, in Indonesia. So all of these can be issues that um, in, in some extent influence the growth or the development of business and human rights in our region. And what should be done? Where should we go from here? Okay, so this is um, a bit about the, the BBHR week or business and uh, 
uh, Bangkok, which is a human right week, whereby we focus pretty much on um, strategy to engage uh, civil society, uh, as well as uh, business sectors and government in the region to work together towards the um, uh, the proper ways in um, not abusing human rights as part of um, our uh, activities. Okay, so um, in this sense, we focus on the, to protect, to respect, and the remedy as part of the UNGP. And um, we had um, the whole week long on our various issues similar to um, SBI, but for us, uh, we focused pretty much on um, day one when we uh, invited um, key decision makers and policy makers in uh, business and in uh, uh, government in the region to be a part of and participate in the workshop so we can get some idea. And no further ado, let's get to the point. Um, first, um, issues that emerge from um, among the participants at the workshop on um, COVID-19 and its impact on business and human rights. Since um, we understand that um, COVID-19 has tremendous impact on uh, business in many way from uh, you know, step one in commercial activities to um, the final steps in uh, having your product ready on the shelf, right? So in, in our region, we found that um, there are various dimensions of problem, such as once uh, the lockdown started, um, the lack of job, the lack of income, or poor access to uh, health services, in particular, uh, those that, that, that are related to COVID-19 can be problematic uh, for those who are a part of um, value chain in the business. Um, in Thailand, for instance, uh, if you recall, uh, we heard daily news on um, uh, migrant workers who may be out of job or some of them may be in the uh, devastating uh, situation to the point that their um, uh, workplace have no job and, and, and just drop them somewhere in the jungle with um, had no provision for their life. That's horrible. Or you heard of um, um, the migrant workers from the CLMV trying to return home, but also uh, fed um, challenging in going back to their home country, right? So, um, well, member of ASEAN with the um, the greater dependence on the uh, formal and informal economy, particular in in um, service sectors, without the proper um, safeguard against the the termination of regional uh, employment or experience, such pandemic can find this an issue, right? So, um, the issue that we heard a lot related to COVID-19, obviously, is on freedom of movement. We mentioned that um, human rights, in particular, on the right to travel, the right to uh, have freedom, right? That's one thing. And one that it's um, um, limited because of the pandemic, um, we found that um, the level of management by different business sectors or organization within the region can be done at different standard. Um, well, for example, uh, delegate from Singapore mentioned strict uh, restriction at the beginning and then start to um, uh, slightly uh, open up the, the system, whereby in Philippines, they talk about a hard restriction from day one. So uh, ability to move uh, for people, from home to work, or people in certain services whereby working from home wasn't an option, can be um, the uh, issues on uh, due diligence that uh, business in Southeast Asia need to take into account. Okay, um, issues related to migrant workers were mentioned a lot in this sense, in terms of uh, the lack of um, framework to promote or tax force to promote um, the ability to move or access to health service among migrant workers or transport the migrant workers who may uh, not be able to return home or they might you know, um, move into another country without the permission or proper legal system or um, health check. So this has to be done as part of the um, due diligence by business, okay? Um, we also heard a lot that um, uh, COVID-19 also uh, brought into the um, uh, issue on access to finance, uh, in particular those who are 
engage themselves in um, small and medium enterprises in the region. Um, they talk about short-term loans that, again, we have various standards in the region at that time. I'm talking about, let's say, 12 uh, months or to 18 months ago. Uh, apart from that, we also heard um, the story of um, the fact that uh, when when uh, the access to finance to daily employment was cut, then um, there's issues on getting uh, money from the informal system with high interest, and there isn't any norms. In this sense, business didn't do anything much to protect their work, right? Their workers, and um, didn't really provide. They, they tried to provide some shelters and food, uh, but I guess um, the decision of uh, this. Uh, policy makers who participate at the region said, we need to come up with the firmer plans if or when the, situ the similar situation occur in the future. Okay. Um, of course, business sector can also play a role in um, the promotion of, of right to good health and employment. In fact, I wrote an, an, an op-ed and published in um, Bangkok ports on vaccination as a uh, part of the uh, human right due diligence by business sectors, which I think uh, I insist it's important that uh, business uh, should think of this as a part of the um, basic human rights for good health. We understand in, in most country, I, I'm not sure that therefore I say almost not all countries, it's, it's a part of the uh, human rights that uh, government should provide vaccine or must provide vaccine, but um, business can play a part into this as well. The next theme was um, on the fact that um, when you look at um, responsible investment and um, we look at value chain, um, we found a lot of issues related to uh, 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 business um, human rights and, and, and due diligence uh, first uh, in terms of um, uh, responsible investment. Uh, the participants at the, the workshop um, suggest that um, because uh, when um, investors come into this picture uh, and prior to this situation, the issues of pandemic or uh, a corporate responsibility in, in health aspect wasn't really mentioned clearly, right? So this should be a part of uh, responsible investment in the future. Uh, looking at um, health issue or health related issues to workers or those who are part of the, the value chain. Um, and uh, if you look at um, countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, they try to look at um, how to uh, promote responsible investment that will lead to a wider social impact, including health. And I think that should be um, a model uh, for a uh, country in ASEAN. Uh, with the, the progress of Thailand as the first country in the region that comes up with the uh, NAP or National Action Plan, this can be something that uh, we use as the prototy prototype or something to ignite this conversation in the region on how to uh, progress to the next level that we have a regional action plan for uh, human rights um, due diligence for business as well. Okay, and the value chain, if you look at the slide I share with you, I try to unfold steps of business in, in generic concept from the, um, the concept that you get the business idea, you need to start up by looking at uh, logistic and biologistic, um, then you operate, right, whether it's by yourself or you get an OEM original um, uh, equipment manufacturer for you, then you send it out there, you do marketing, you do service, when you look at this chain, it involves people, a group of people from various places, and that should be a proper system to monitor that uh, we are not going to violate those who are part of this um, value chain, whether it's from the, the um, infrastructure, from the human resource aspect, from the procurement aspect. Okay, I show this uh, next picture at the bottom is if you have uh, traveled to Hong Kong, um, you might re recall that on Sunday in the, um, this is a common picture in Hong Kong on Sunday, um, it, uh, migrant workers, mostly from the Philippines, uh, or actually this one, this one is from Singapore, I'm so sorry. Um, they hang out 
uh, because that's the only day of the week they get freedom to spend times. Uh, and um, it was mentioned by the participants in the, in the sense that um, informal uh, workers, those who might travel to work as the domestic helpers or in uh, manufacturing in another place, um, should be um, also looking after. You know, um, this is the time where uh, we shouldn't allow corruption to get into uh, the impact of health and human rights development by business. Okay, so um, what more important for us when we hear the, th the themes, the COVID-19 as then um, um, emerge emerging issues and issues on value chains as part of a human rights that we need to respect uh, each, each part of the chain is part of the um, social impact and investment that we should be aware of, uh, society impact, okay? Uh, some suggestion that emerge from our policymakers include um, the engagement between um, public private sectors. And also we need to be able to include uh, academic or education slash, slash research institution to be part of this. Why? They strongly recommend that the engagement among these actors, because um, if you look at the, the generic concept called a uh, triple helix model, the power of the three can promote innovation. And when it comes to social value in the aspect of human rights, innovation is also the way to go, right? If you look at sustainable development goals, one of the goals is um, to look at innovation, to create um, new forms of, or patterns of, doing things, including business. Um, this engagement uh, should go beyond generic dialogue, but uh, can also, also go as a consultation or mutual work uh, with um, relevant government agency and uh, research institution that uh, promote uh, the, uh, the power of uh, ASEAN as the key actors in uh, human rights when it comes to international business. Um, again, it, it go back to um, responsible in, investment since we uh, at the meeting agree that it is pivotal to design and offer financial institutions a framework, and we're talking about a regional financial institution, a framework to guide their own behavior towards um, human rights and, and um, labor practices. Also, we need to uh, help them to prepare for uh, policy changes in the region that would shift toward the direction of um, uh, responsible investment. And um, I think uh, responsible investment can be the common goal that uh, we take, take it seriously on investment uh, from both investor and the banking and finance uh, sector altogether. This will um, uh, enable the promotion of labor and human rights compliance and practices in the region in the long run.